he is a pediatric endocrinologist at Max Hospital, Max Group of Hospitals. Over to you, Dr. Ganesh. Thank you so much, Dr. Aftar and Dr. Ritesh and Dr. Uh, so, uh, automation in insulin delivery itself is a new concept, and I am here to give a brief uh, update about automation in insulin delivery. Uh, things are changing very fast in the field of type 1 diabetes, at least with respect to technology. And uh, we should make maximum effort to update ourselves because otherwise we'll be lagging behind and uh, nowadays even patients have much more knowledge with respect to technology and newer things in the field of type 1 diabetes. Despite the advances uh, in the treatment, majority of the type children with type 1 diabetes do not achieve the prescribed glycemic targets. This is evident from uh, type 1 diabetes exchange registry that only 70% of children and 21% of adults achieved the prescribed AMS targets. This was when the target was 7.5. Now ISPAD and several other organizations are bringing the targets lower and lower. However, the ray uh, of hope is uh, technology because the data from speech registry clearly shows improvement in FPVC values along with parallel increase in technology use. It is, however, uh, technology at least in the conventional format as it was available is associated with additional care we were burden because they have to have additional tasks like more frequent blood glucose or a CGM, downloading of CGM, interpretation of CGM, adjustment of basal insulin or basal insulin rates and frequent dose adjustments which uh, kind of limits the use of technology and automation therefore can sub overcome some of these challenges. The difficulties in diabetes management are uh, very evident considering the so many adherence tasks that are involved in management of type 1 diabetes. Uh, this picture uh, shows the data from speech registry. Uh, as you can see, the bars, uh, the black bars, represent the patients with HPVC targets uh, at less than 7%. And you could see that there has been a steady increase post-2013 uh, in terms of the percentages who achieved the target A1C. And this is dramatically associated with increase in the use of CGM as shown in, the, in these lightest grey bars that post-2015 the CGM use has dramatically increased and also the use of CSII uh, that is pump has increased. So CGM is one of the most important advances in the field of type 1 diabetes. So what exactly is automated insulin delivery, which is also alter, sometimes we use it as a closed loop insulin delivery and some people use the term artificial pancreas, which is kind of a misnomer because we are only taking care of the insulin part of it. We are not exactly looking after the exocrine pancreas or glucagon or some other thing, at least as of now. So what exactly is that automated insulin delivery? Here the concept is that there is an input given by the continuous glucose sensor which is actually testing the glucose in the interstitial fluid and this input is being given to a, a control algorithm. So there is a, a machine which is hosting the control algorithm and the algorithm is dictating how much insulin is to be delivered. Okay. So we have kind of closed the bridge between the glucose monitoring and insulin delivery using this control algorithm. So this is called as closed loop uh, pump or closed loop delivery. There is some terminology which needs to be very clearly understood. Conventionally, insulin pump was just a way of delivering insulin. However, with the advent of CGM, we started having sensor augmented pumps. So therefore, pumps. We have pumps and we have glucose monitors together. Initially, they, these two were totally disconnected. The next step was a feature called as low glucose suspend, which means that the pump would suspend the insulin delivery if there is a CGM showing a blood glucose value of less than 70 mg per deciliter. So this protected against CGM hypoglycemia. As an advance to this, there was a predictive low glucose suspend, which means that the hypoglycemia or insulin delivery was suspended even before the hypoglycemia happened or hypoglycemia is about to happen. So this provided further protection. Now, 
what then is the advance? What is the advancement over sensor augmented curve? Sensor augmented, those of you who have used Medtronic 640G or Paradigm Neo, they were the sensor augmented pumps. Whereas now the current pumps are what is called as hybrid closed loop. Hybrid closed loop? Closed loop because the insulin delivery is dictated by the glucose inputs that are coming from the CGM. And why hybrid? Because it is only the basal insulin delivery which is being adjusted, not the bolus. So boluses are still have to be announced by the user and the user has to manually administer the insulin bolus. It is not automatically taking care of the mean time doses of insulin. What is the difference between hybrid closed loop and advanced hybrid closed loop? In hybrid closed loop, there is an increase in basal rate in response to hyperglycemia. In addition to suspending low glucose or uh, insulin delivery on low glucose, in hybrid closed loop, the insulin basal delivery is increased in response to hyperglycemia. And in AHCL, that is advanced, which is the pump currently available in India, here, in addition to increasing the basal rate, there is an additional feature of auto-correction bolus. So, supposing the insulin levels, the sugar levels are not coming down just by increasing the basal rate, over and above that, the pump delivers the auto-correction bolus. This is automatic. So, this is providing additional feature to take care of the hyperglycemia. Now, we talked about control algorithms. How is it that the glucose input is being used to adjust the insulin delivery? There are several companies which manufacture the closed loop insulin pumps. Most of them based, uh, are based on three types of algorithms. One is called as a PID controller, Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. Although it is new to the field of medicine, but it is being used everywhere, including the hall where you are sitting, where the AC is controlling the temperature at a certain, it is at a certain target. So what is the meaning of Proportional Integral Derivative Algorithm? Here the pump is seen, proportional means how far is the current blood glucose away from the target glucose. Integral means what is the change over a period, like uh, uh, what is the rate of change that is uh, uh, for how long this blood glucose has been away from the target glucose. And the derivative is in the last two hours, what is the rate of change of glucose. So these three inputs have been taken into consideration to deliver a target uh, uh, amount of insulin to maintain the blood sugars in target range. The second, uh, the, so the Medtronic 780G which is available in India is based on PID algorithm. Whereas some other pumps like uh, Tandem, uh, T-Spin and uh, uh, Omnipod 5 etc. are based on NPC algorithm. NPC is model predictive control. So basically what is what it is doing is it is taking into account the blood glucose values or blood glucose strength in the past uh, one or two hours and predicting what are going to be the blood glucose values in the subsequent hours. The algorithm is predicting the blood glucose values and accordingly suggesting the insulin doses. And this is being periodically done so that uh, the reference trajectory of the blood glucose is met. So here you can see that based on these orange values, the insulin pump uh, has proposed, uh, has estimated that this is going to be the sequence of estimated blood glucose and accordingly this is the suggested insulin infusion, the blue dash line. And then the pump has learned over a period of time that this is not enough. We need to have a second sequence of estimated VG and second sequence of proposed insulin. So to, to close the gap between what is predicted blood glucose and what is the reference target, the pump is suggesting another sequence of uh, insulin which is in this purple uh, line. And with this, the blood glucose values have come down. Okay? So ultimately the purpose is to close the gap between the reference trajectory and what is the predicted blood glucose value. The third is a fuzzy logic knowledge based system where the, in addition to this algorithm, the inputs, the human inputs like in terms of meal announcement, change in blood glucose values, exercise etc. are being considered. So the advanced, the 780G uses PID along with fuzzy logic. So it is based on two of these mechanisms. In future, 
so these are the this is the comparison of currently available in India. We only have Medtronic 780G, uh, but some of our patients do import Omnipod or Tandem uh, pumps from abroad, and therefore we need to be aware about them also. Uh, Canvas is uh, Canvas is an Android-based system, which is uh, I believe Cambridge uh, University is quite helpful in terms of providing this uh, application. And uh, so these are the systems that are currently available uh, with respect to the hybrid flow. And advanced over hybrid closed loop will be a complete closed loop where the bonus also needs to be uh, is also automatically administered. This is not available anywhere in the world. And the next step will be multi hormone pump where insulin and glucagon and some other hormones are also being administered together. In addition to these control algorithms, which are purely taking input from the sensor, something under development is the multivariable uh, artificial pancreas control algorithms. So, this is going to take into consideration inputs from a wristband, which is going to uh, give inputs of activity, temperature changes, and several other things to predict hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, exercise detection, and this is additionally going to help in controlling the blood. So, days uh, in future seem to be really exciting with respect to type 1 diabetes management. There have been several studies uh, published uh, using the uh, hybrid closed loop insulin delivery right from you know 2008 to 9 uh, till uh, 2021, documenting its efficacy with respect to improvement in the uh, timing range, improvement in the hypoglycemia rates, and improvement in the glycemic variability. This is one a recent meta-analysis and this only focusing on a couple of recent studies. So this is a meta-analysis of nine uh, randomized studies in adolescents. The adolescent is one group where no success was achieved till now, despite of whatever improvement in technology. So in this meta-analysis it was clearly shown that the closed loop uh, control is associated with improved time and range, improved glycemic variability and improved safety in terms of hypo and hyperglycemic levels. Even in clinical practice, we have seen in the past year or one and a half years of experience that it has become relatively more easier to achieve the timing range and A1C values which were closer to target with the help of this uh, pump. So, amongst about 20 odd patients that we have on this pump, except for two or three patients, most of the patients are doing very well on hybrid closed loop pump therapy. Another interesting study is about toddlers or young children. So, this is a study published in NEJ. On a, it's a randomized control trial, a 13 week multicenter randomized control trial, where participants are allocated two to one to closed loop versus standard treatment, which is like sensor augmented pump or basal bolus with CGI. 102 children between 2 to 6 years. This is a population which where very few studies are available. And the primary outcome was percentage timing range of 70 to 180 uh, in the study group. And it was seen that people, uh, children on closed loop were able to achieve a uh, timing range uh, of change from 54 to almost 71, 72 percent in the in the intervention arm, whereas it changed from only 54 to 55 percent in the standard arm. Amongst the group, uh, amongst the study group, the subdivision of those who were initially on pump or whether uh, they were on MDI, both of them had improvement in terms of timing range. And you can see in this diagram below panel B that the improvement is very prominent in the nocturnal control. Obviously, nocturnal control is relatively more easy. So, the improvement is very prominent in the nocturnal uh, glycemic control. Uh, this is a data from India which was recently presented at uh, this bad, uh, meeting of 160 children with type 1 diabetes. This is the observational data from the downloads of uh, care link uh, from the pump and CGM. So, it was seen that mean GMI in this population was 6.9. GMI is a kind of equivalent of HDMC, glycemic glucose measurement indicator. And the CV was about 35.7%. 57% users had a GMI of less than 7% and 53% users had a TIR or time range of more than 70%, which is a significant, I mean, which is a significant finding. Uh, less than 3% readings were below 70 mg per deciliter in this group of children. And about 80% of children had their readings within target at night. 
So we can see with what are the little observational experience in Indian uh, data that this therapy is clearly giving what uh, its predecessor did not uh, give us. There are some practical aspects to be considered. It is just because you are an automatic pump, it doesn't mean that manual settings are not important because the automatic pump is dependent on the sensor used. If you are not using the sensor, you are in the manual pump. I'll just be taking one or two, one minute maybe stuff. Um, so manual settings are important because the sensors can fail uh, uh, during sick days, during uh, things like that, manual settings may be important. And we have to recheck the manual settings during the visits also because it's going to revert to manual mode if it is out of the uh, smart mode. The blood glucose targets are fixed in smart mode. We can only give a target of 100, 110 or 120 milligram per deciliter. Active insulin time, what we used to keep as 3 or 4 hours in the manual, uh, in the open loop pump. Here we have to keep as 2 or 2 and a half hours. If somebody is getting a lot of hypoglycemia, we keep it 2 and a half hours. If there are hyperglycemia, then we try to keep close to 2 hours. We can adjust the insulin carb ratio and sensitivity factor like what we used to do previously. But basal rate, we don't need to adjust. The, after the first 48 hours, the pump is going to do this job. We don't have to do anything about the basal rates as long as the patient is using the smart mode. This is just an example to explain uh, how the pump works. Basically, you can see that the blood sugars are above target here, and the pump has increased this pink line is the basal, increasing the basal delivery. And over and above the basal delivery, it is giving small, 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 small boluses again and again so that so as to bring the blood glucose value in the range. Once the blood glucose value is in the low range, the insulin pump suspects the insulin delivery as in here. These are the manual boluses which are administered by a patient. In this case, there is, you can see that frequent snacking and frequent bolusing. So there are some problems which cannot be taken care of. So patient behavior, carb counting, bolus timing. Bolus timing is very important when you are using this pump. Bolus has to be taken 15 minutes before meals while you are on this pump. This is important for all therapies but especially on this pump because Otherwise, what might happen is that if you are post mean bolusing, the pump is going to give automatic correction and the bolus is going to be added on to that and the hypoglycemia risk will be increased. There are limitations of automated insulin delivery in terms of cost. It is still in the subcutaneous space, so there is a lag period. There is a lag period with respect to sensor uh, usage also. There could be sensor failures, compression, thinking, etc. There is often a conflict between smart pump and smart patients. So if they see hyperglycemia or hyperglycemia, if the patient is intervening too much, so there needs to be a little trust on the algorithm and we have to kind of uh, try and reduce our own control over the algorithm. To conclude, I would say that AID is one step closer to physiological insulin delivery. We are nowhere close to what God has created or what our body has done, but it is just one step closer. Current data suggests improved timing rate, improved glycemic variability and protection against hypoglycemia using these pumps. But hypoglycemia management and exercise management needs to be different. Because hypoglycemia, you, because the pump is doing so many other things, the amount of glucose that you need to give for these patients is lesser than what you would give for basal bolus or the conventional pumps. Exercise management also because pre-meal carbohydrate intake. Uh, will be associated with a correction from the pump. So therefore, instead of adding carbs before the exercise, we suggest taking carbs in a small, small amount throughout the period of exercise on this pump. Breathing bolusing is very important and basics of diabetes management such as side rotation, uh, in calculation of carbs, uh, discipline, lifestyle are still uh, important even while you are using this pump. Thank you.